Hello, welcome to this third and final video in this series on the integral test. In the first video, we did the presentation of the integral test and two basic examples. But deeper than that, we looked at the why behind the scenes, what makes this function be so closely tied to the series. In the second video, we looked at shortcut um, to the integral test called the P series. And now we have a series of examples here that the P series doesn't fit for. And so we actually going to end up using the integral test on these. Uh, first up, um, we have one over n squared plus four. The plus four stops the series from being a P series. Without the plus four, it should be exactly a P series. One over n squared converges. And it's that idea that is, is the essence behind the comparison tests that are to come in the next set of videos. Um, so at this point, we're going to actually use the integral test, but there are later, we're going to find that there are better tests to, to use better as being uh, less time consuming, less, less effort, and uh, gets you to the, to the result quicker. Okay, so what do we do with um, the integral test? We replace all the n's with x's. We have this function, one over x squared plus four. And if we can show, that, that function is continuous and, and positive, and it's decreasing as well. We're interested in the interval from one to infinity because that matches the series. And so now we can look at then the integral from one to infinity on this function. And it's of a format we've seen before, where we have x squared plus a squared in the denominator. And there's a constant or um, a one in the numerator. Um, through, a, through a u sub, you can see that it looks a lot like arctan's derivative. And with some, some minor shifting, you can, you can get that. It's an improper integral. The upper limit is infinity. So we put a b in its place. Um, the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 4 is 1 half the arctan of x over 2. And so we have to put a b in and put a 1 in. <clears throat> putting a b in, we just replace the x with a b. And putting a 1 in, we get the arctan of a half. Now b goes off to infinity. You're going to have to rely on your, nature, your notion of, of the graph of arctan to know what happens with it as we go to infinity, it reaches an asymptote of pi over 2, horizontal asymptote. And so it's because of this, then, um, that we can say that the integral converges. All right. Uh, the arc 10 of a half, that's not a value. That's one of our unit circle angles. Okay. Arc sine of a half, or arc cosine of a half. Yeah, but not arc 10 of a half. And so just leave it. Doesn't matter. The point is that when it could have been improper, when it could have been off to infinity, um, when it could have been divergent, it wasn't. The value of the integral doesn't matter. It's the fact that it converges to some finite number that matters to us. The size of that finite number doesn't matter. Because the integral converges, the integral test comes along and says that the series must also do the same thing. So therefore, the series converges. All right. All right, great. Let's look at B. 1 over n, ln of n. The function, by replacing the n's with x's, we get 1 over x log x. It's continuous, so long as we're greater than 2. Uh, it's positive. It's decreasing. We can use it to see what happens with the improper integral from 2 to infinity. So we put a b in its place. We let b go off to infinity. And this is a nice u sub, right? We let u be natural log of x. And then its derivative is 1 over x dx. And so it works out well. We get 1 over u du, which is the natural log of u. Technically an absolute value bars, but for these particular x's, we're fine. Drop any absolute value bars. Everybody's positive. And so what happens then is we get the natural log of the natural log of x, because that's what u was. So we put a b in and we put a 2 in. But what happens as b goes to infinity? The natural log of an infinitely large number is infinitely large, and then there's another natural log on top of that. This integral is infinite. Ln x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. This integral diverges. 
And according to the integral test, whatever this integral does, the series follows up and does exactly the same thing. 1 over n, l and n also diverges. All right, the third one, ln of n over n squared. Replace the n's with x's. We have ln x over x squared. It's continuous. It's positive. It's decreasing, but not right away. Not when x is 2. Um, it won't, it, you have to get to x equals 3 or more. So, but that's okay, though. It doesn't matter about the first couple terms. It matters as long as it's decreasing after some value that is positive and for every value after that. All right, so the integral is tied to the series. What does this integral do from 2 to infinity? It's improper. Put a b in its place. This time, however, we can't get away with a simple u sub or some simple formula like the arctan antiderivative. So we're going to have to actually do a hardcore integral here. We're going to have to integrate this using integration by parts. First up on the list of the hierarchy, the mnemonic to help you figure out what to let u equal, you'll find that u should be the ln of x. Any logarithmic function, u should be equal to that. Okay. Now you take the derivative of the u, you take the integral of the dv. The derivative of u gives you du, <clears throat> which is 1 over x dx. Now the integral of x to the negative 2 is x to the negative 1 over negative 1, better written as negative 1 over x. The integration by parts formula is uv minus the integral of v du. So we get negative log x on top of x. Then there's a double minus there. There's a minus from the integration by parts formula and a minus from v, so plus. Multiplying this together, you get 1 over x squared. We did that derivative. We did that antiderivative already. Happens a lot. Where you have switched for an integral that you've already done. So it's negative 1 over x. Now these both have a negative 1 over x in them. It's best to combine them and make it negative natural log of x minus 1. Or you can factor the negative out if you want. That is our antiderivative. We are ready to plug a b in, ready to plug a 2 in, and try to discover what happens as b goes to infinity. The minus a negative makes the plus come in for when you plug a 2 in. All right. Well, what happens with the b term as your b goes to infinity is that it goes to 0. This integral converges. To show it, we can do L'Hopital's rule, or we can argue based on growth rates. But one time through, L'Hopital's rule gets it for you. So let's just do that. And so the integral converges. And we know that the integral is tied to the series. Whatever the one does, the other one does. And so that means that the series also converges. All right. Great. So that was three quick examples of the integral test being used. And this closes out the series on the integral test. It's one of the 10 tests that we have to learn. And it has a shortcut, <clears throat> which is, is even nicer, the P series. And so thank you very much for watching. My name is <clears throat> thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment down below or reach out to me. Um, and I'm here to help you. All right, see you in the next video, set of videos, next series of videos. Uh, like and subscribe, and uh, see you later.